welcome to the Sailor Moon exhibition in Osaka, Japan, which happened until June 2nd. I came here with a couple of my best friends to show them everything that I originally saw in Tokyo at the exhibition in 2022, but there were a few changes that happened at this one. So join me for this really fun vlog style video where I show you all the coolest things that you can see at this exhibition slash museum, as well as the merchandise and some of my own commentary. The museum happened at Namba Parks in Osaka. I was able to purchase my tickets online via the Namba Parks AsoView website, and I was really happy that we decided to go to Namba Parks super early that day. We were able to take <laughs> some photos with the really cool posters and advertisements that were all over the place. And we had a nice calm morning just walking around the beautiful gardens. It was a really lovely way to start our day and kind of get our groundings in terms of where the museum was. Hi. We are about to enter the Sailor Moon Museum. Jen, are you excited? <laughs> I have a feeling we're gonna like break down crying because Jen's never been here and we've been best friends since eighth grade so I'm excited to see your reaction. This is gonna be so fun. Hi ladies! Hi. Hi. We're about to go into the Sailor Moon Museum for the second time at Osaka. Today is April 22nd. I'm very excited. <gasps> There's a poster behind us, let's go. The museum had a lot of really beautiful posters outside that you could take pictures in front of, as well as the cute bathroom signs. The first thing you see as you enter this exhibition was a gorgeous poster of Sailor Moon with her cape. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, perfect. The second room was right after the space-time door, which if this door tapestry thing was available as merchandise, I would totally buy it and put this in the door entryway to my Sailor Moon collection room. This first room featured a beautiful projection of the introduction and some of the transformations for Sailor Moon and the Sailor Guardians. I did decide to mute this room since it's licensed music and I didn't show the projection on camera. I love being able to see all the different transformation pens and wands as well as the outer talismans and the silence glaive. I'm still hoping one day we will actually get proplicas of all of these outer talismans and the silence glaive. I think that would be so incredible. We entered this room that had beautiful holographic and sparkly posters of some of the most gorgeous pages out of the manga. Each of these sections was separated by art all the way from one to five. These posters printed on this holographic poster material were incredibly gorgeous and inspired me to do some of my own Sailor Moon collection room renovations. The only problem with this room was how reflective the material was and given that the lighting in this room was somewhat low, you ended up getting a glare at the highest portions of these posters. It was very hard to get them on camera without an ugly glare and I wish they would have considered changing the angle of the lighting so that you could have gotten better pictures. It was really nice to be able to study these different pages of the manga up close, especially at this very, very high print setting, you were able to see details that you can't really see in the original manga printings. It was quite beautiful, and we spent a lot of time in this room just taking close-up photos of some of our favorite pages. I really appreciated that we didn't have to move from room to room super fast. They weren't forcing us to leave any of the rooms. You could take as much time as you wanted in each of these rooms. And we ended up spending about two hours just studying everything that was available to us. In this next room, you can really tell how crowded it was on the second day. This room featured character drawings as well as location drawings and original sketches and some animation images for each of the Sailor Moon anime seasons, including Crystal and the newest movies. When I originally saw this room back in 2022 in Tokyo, it was a lot larger and the colors and the backgrounds for each of these seasons really inspired how I decided to renovate my Sailor Moon collection room, which you will see a tour of soon. 
One of my favorite parts of this Sailor Moon Seasons anime room is seeing all the location sketches and the character sketches. You can definitely tell a difference between each of the character animators for each of the seasons. You know, I think I remember watching your bootleg. We would buy that thing instantly, but we didn't. We did what we had to do. I also loved the holographic prism logo posters that they had at the very tip top of each of these different seasons. I would love to have something like that in my collection room. Seeing how each of the character animators defined their own personal style and brought that to Sailor Moon is really interesting to see when you have all the seasons printed out onto these large boards. Is that a coffee stain? <laughs> Osabu, oh, come on, man. directors. It's really cool. When we got to Sailor Moon Crystal, one of my friends pointed out how strange the character drawings were for Crystal compared to the rest of the seasons. I explained to her that they brought back one of the original character designers for Sailor Moon Eternal as well as Cosmos after the pretty large criticisms that Crystal had. The proportions were off in Sailor Moon Crystal and it did receive a lot of backlash. The proportions are off. They just look super weird. Eternal and Cosmos had a different character designer who was also one of the originals from the 1990s anime. So those movies look very, very beautiful and are similar to what we're used to from the 1990s original anime. So then they ended up changing the art director for this movie and they did the same thing with Cosmos. This is a collector's dream. I need to start a checklist. I have that, I have that, I don't have that. Oh, I need to get that. <laughs> this room makes me so excited. <laughs> Let's move on to one of the best rooms, which is just for the collectors. This toy collection room was separated by series of toys and type of toys. So we had sections for the proplicas, for figure arts, for vintage toys, everything from gashapons to dolls. One of my favorite parts of seeing this room in person is being able to see the original boxes in very, very good condition, as well as all the original accessories that came in those boxes up close and personal. So if you are a collector and you're trying to find things as good condition as possible, this is a wonderful way to document what you should expect. And it can also help you avoid bootlegs. So cute. So cute. Seeing the old arcade games as well as the little children's ride are so funny and so fun to see up close. I can't believe that these are still available to view to this day. I've been trying to read you about your car's extended warranty. 
These original dresses are some of my favorite parts to see, and even though I'm not a cosplayer, it was really nice to see the details up close, since it's often hard to tell how detailed these are and what kind of materials and fabrics they use when you just see the promotional posters for the museum. I always try to document the materials and the design and how the beading was done in these dresses as much as I possibly can. You can really see how beautiful these dresses are when you're able to get very, very close to them. I was surprised that there weren't any ropes roping people off from touching them. However, everyone was very respectful and nobody actually touched the dresses. Which one is your favorite? I'm really curious. I love the rainbow gradient dress. However, the outer Sailor Guardian's lace dress is also a favorite. I would love to cosplay as Luna one day, and I wish that these dresses were available made to order so that I could actually take one home. I would love to have a high quality dress like this, even though I rarely have an event to go to where I would have a reason to wear one. And for all the completionist collectors, they did have complete collections here of different items such as some of the stick and rod gashapons, the miniature Ely tablets, as well as a ton of vintage Sailor Moon toys. It was really nice to see all the perfume bottles as well as a lot of the makeup items here on display. I don't collect a lot of cards, but we had a card section, and then we had a whole section available for Sailor Moon live performances and musicals. I haven't seen many of the musicals myself. I've only seen one in person, the rest on Blu-ray or DVD. I was very surprised that there weren't any employees in this specific room, basically keeping everybody from touching any of these items. All of these costumes were on display without ropes, without being behind any kind of border. So you could literally get inches away from them but again luckily everybody was very respectful and nobody touched the costumes Seeing all the original vintage Nakayoshi items in person is also very useful for collection completionists like myself. So again, I really enjoy documenting all of this as much as possible so I know what to collect. And the very last room for this exhibition had a few posters on the wall that you could take pictures in front of. Now, each of these posters I noticed was a little bit smaller than the 2022 exhibition in Tokyo, probably because of physical restrictions due to the size of this Osaka building. These posters were well lit and I really enjoyed being able to see them in person, especially this one of all of the Sailor Guardians together in front of a couple of gemstones. many people in the background. You ready to go shopping? Now we ended up going into the shopping area, which I wanted to record, but it was incredibly oh God, crowded. So, crowded so I here. ended up not recording anything in here except for this little bit of table coverage of some of the newest items, including some Aurora posters. All in all, my entire museum and exhibition experience was so much fun. I had a blast being able to meet fellow Sailor Moon fans in person. A lot of people who I've followed or who I just discovered on Instagram as well as YouTube, fellow content creators, and being able to explore this exhibition with my besties was just truly a wonderful experience. If you get the opportunity to go, definitely do so, and make sure to subscribe if you want to see my merchandise review for from the museum. I did purchase a lot of goodies from there. I'll also be posting videos about the Sailor Moon manhole covers and the Osaka Sailor Moon Exhibition Cafe. Thanks for watching! Sayonara! Jane.